So we've already been demonstrated the abdominal and the vaginal. So you should already know what the first thing you do when you come into the room. Thank you. So, the legs is a little, and arms and any type of extremities is a little bit different because we have to position them differently. Abdominal, they're laying there, you undrape them and whoop de doo you're done. Badge a little bit more whoop de doing and doing and you're done. <laughs> this is a little bit different because you have body parts that flip flop everywhere because your patient is unconscious. So, this is going to be like jello, dead weight. So, it's up to you to make sure that you don't hyperextend the knee, things like that. You lock the table before you start. Mm. So, There's some fucky toes. <laughs> Which one is it? <laughs> That's the only fucky toes. Oh, girl. Oh, I was going to give you high five. I thought you were cursed. I did not. <laughs> Kind of sort of prep, but not real. They're not real movable. No, they're not real. So you don't want to hyperextend the knee. That's gonna hurt. You don't want to jack his ankle up the wrong way. Extension and flexion. Um, this moves, but. Was that her? Gotcha. Okay, never mind. Okay, this is kind of rickety when it moves. A real patient's leg is going to just, it's going to be like jello. Have you ever picked up a sleeping child? Mm -hmm. Everything just falls <laughs> <laughs> around, you know? So you really got to be careful because it's your responsibility not to let any injuries happen. The same with the arms, they do the same thing. Um, knowing normal range of motion of those body parts will help you a lot into knowing which way you can actually manipulate the arm and the leg, etc., etc. All right. So over here is asleep. You're positioning extremities. You can't really do it. I guess I shouldn't have covered them up yet. You can't really do it like this, right? With them laying on the table. Any idea why? Is it a pull? I don't know. Because you can't prep the other side. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. And you oh. have to do it circumferentially. Oh, yeah. Both, both sides. sides of the leg? Or you both legs? All the sides. I'm trying to clarify your question. Like all the way around the leg? Yeah. Right. So if we have, this is his alley, it kind of came off. <laughs> the tibial <laughs> fracture. So we can't just section off a piece like that like you would do with the abdomen. Any idea why? If you just think about it, okay, they're laying on their back. That's, no, that's not going to move at all. This will never leave that position while they're doing abdominal surgery. So you're going all the way down to the table level, any part that can be exposed. When you're working with an extremity, it's constantly being moved. Um, if you were to just do this spot, then everything else would be contaminated. So, the rules of thumb when you're doing an extremity is you're going to think about where your incision site is or your surgical site, because it may already be laid open. You may not be making an incision. Um, so think about first, where's the site at? And then you're going to prep from the joint above to the joint below. So for this tibial fracture right here, it's going to be from the knee to the ankle. If we were doing... I got bit by a shark and he's missing a big chunk here. <laughs> Only I can think of off the top of my head. Um, because it's so high up, just going to the joint and joint here probably wouldn't suffice, right? Because it's such a big area, you would do the whole hip to here. And a lot of times for that, depending on the surgeon, they would have to change the patient's position. They would put them in a lateral position, like for a hip surgery. You would prep them in a lateral position. Prepping is a real chore for hips. But luckily, most circula uh, scrubs don't do that. The circulating nurse does. So for for us in here, we're just going to work from the knee down. Um, if you're doing a bunionectomy or a hammer toe, where do you think you would prep? All the way to the ankle. 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 Ankle.
looks like that. Okay. I can't make this guy bend to do it. So, yep, you do the whole thing. So we would prep, start at the surgical site, go all the way around to here. When you're doing an extremity, one of the rules of thumb, we have a gray area where there's no gray areas. You can't help but cross over. You have to go around the leg. So it's almost impossible. It can be done, but what happens, and I'll show you, is that you'll end up only having one hand to use. Because once you've got a position, we'll say, I, it's like I have a position here. I do this for hips, but... And I'm prepping like this with two hands. Now I have no way to put the leg back down. I don't put them up here for, for prepping. When we, <laughs> when we dislocate the hip after we're already in there, I put the hip up here so I can retract and have both hands free. That's what I meant by hip on my shoulder. So don't think about that prepping. <laughs> you got some socks on at least. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're already draped and it's already open and we're going to dislocate the hip because we've got to ream down the femur and ream out the acetabulum. So, we know what we're going to do, right? We've got our stuff over here. But the first thing we're going to check is integrity and stability. Right, and this really isn't, but we're going to pretend it is. <laughs> and we've got um, our positioning devices. Somebody say water bottle, what would they use that for? They actually do that. Hmm? Okay. Okay. Oh. If I'm going to do a foot, I'll put a water bottle right there. Because it only has a little bit of give, so I'm going to get the higher. I can't even speak today. I already did for that matter. See how this squishes down more and it, it can move? Mm -hmm. So when I'm doing this, I don't want to accidentally hit the table and then start over again. So this has more give than this. So I do it right there. But that's for but. All these ways are correct. I'm showing you different ways. You guys are going to practice and figure out what works for you because whatever works for you may not work for her. Maybe she's taller, shorter. You know, just everybody's an individual. Other things I'll do if it's the tibial fracture. Now remember, when you put your positioning device, it has to be past the point of your prep. So I wouldn't be able to put it right there because I can't get to that joint. I would put it behind the joint. And not let his arm fall off the table. <laughs> we'll fix, address that when we start the real thing. I'm just giving you, showing you guys things. I push it up against the leg here, so that gives me some pressure. Okay. I can put the foot right there. Gotcha. So now the whole thing's off the table. That makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Same thing with the arm and hand, just think of it as a smaller spot. When you have them out on the arm table, you just got to remember about our normal range of motion. You don't want to pop their arm out of socket. That'd be bad. Okay, so let's back up here. We're going to make sure if we're not doing the arms, we're going to tuck the arms or if they're out on arm boards, but there's none right here, so we're just going to tuck the arms. We try to keep the patient covered as much as possible. Miss Eason, show you the different ways of tucking your arms? Show us one. With the show you this draw way. sheet. And let's just stick with the way she showed you. Okay. She's right there. Which way did you show them? This way? The draw sheet. The other way, the draw sheet. Okay, I don't Under have a draw sheet. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have a draw sheet, you can, you can tuck it several different ways. As long as there's material there. I just don't happen to have a draw sheet. Um, you want to make sure you have your garbage can or your kick bucket. That's where we're going to drop our sponges, correct? Mayo setup when we're going to open the setup. You can do it this way, you can do it this, whatever way works for you. And we're going to position our light. So if you guys are doing a toe and you stick your light up there, that's not going to work. <laughs> position your light. 
Make sure it's tall enough so it's not going to hit you in the head. We got, did you sh show them standing stool for the shorter mm -hmm. people? So. It's under this. That's underneath them, straight underneath. So, that don't have the problems. Myself and Miss Eason have of being tall. We need a step stool. I'm not saying any names. <laughs> I'm going to pick my positioning devices. because I'm back behind the joint. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go up here by the foot because then that exposes. This is what I need to prep right here. So I put my kick bucket close. Like I like to keep my area close and tight. That way I don't have to do much of this motion and accidentally turn my back. Okay. And then you need to pick your supplies. A lot of these will come with them in here. We don't have that. We have our own over here. And don't just think, because that's brown and green, one's paint and one's scrub, you actually need to read it. Because you need to check really the integrity of everything you open. Even though these are already open, we're pretending they're not. Um, this one's green because I wanted to get some sudsing in action since we're just using water for the demonstration. Um, but it says on here, this is the scrub. This is the solution, correct? Checked. Solution as in like paint? Mm -hmm. okay. Paint and solution are the same thing. So I've got these. And I was asked to show common mistakes, so let me try and just go through the demo. We, they can probably do common mistakes another time because we're running close to four o'clock. <laughs> oh, great. Okay. Well, we've already checked sterility and integrity. Time pass when you're having fun. <laughs> if you guys want to move over there, you can because I know you guys don't want to look at my back. I want to actually see your breath here. Oh, yeah. Mm. <laughs> What's up? Can't see us. <laughs> Sorry. I can't see us. I can't see us. I know you, you guys can. I don't know about her. That's hilarious. I'm going to interject here while she's opening that. See how she moved her mayo back? You're going to have to, if your wrapper hits the bed, you've contaminated it. And I didn't mention that. When you open, make sure that doesn't go across the bed. This should not be at any point over there or over here oh. like that. Okay. Oh, did I it did. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Tweezers right here. You can use two hands as long as you don't contaminate. If that's flipping over. Grab my gloves. Do I want to set this up? Oh, I'm not supposed to tell you that. That's right. Sorry, <laughs> I'm so used to showing mistake, common mistakes. So, I don't have another table handy. I can come down here if I need to. Or I could have stepped back if I've forgotten and bring something up. Because you're going to do open gloving technique. Correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm going to set my gloves there. This is my scrub. I'm not going to reach over. Come around. <coughs> now I've got everything on there that I need. I've got my patient positioned. Next thing I got to do is a something sterile, so. You all know how to do your open gloving, right? Mm -hmm. All the gloves that have in these are not very nice. Mm -hmm. Make a little 
bump in it. So for those of us that have a size six hand, hmm? so for those of us who have a size six hand, um, what you guys want us to get our own size hmm. gloves there? I recommend grabbing a pair of gloves anyways. I guess you drop yours. Mm -hmm. Remember, wherever it flies, it lies. You can adjust the fingers because they come in all twisted up like that was. See, now I can fix my fingers. I cannot fix the cuffs or any of that. The only thing I can adjust is my fingers and my palms, of course. You don't marshmallow, man. <laughs> Am I going to prep yet? Yeah. It's kind of tricky because there's a drape down there, right? Mm -hmm. I just did that so you don't get um, solution everywhere. So if I feel like I'm going to contaminate, remember I've got feet. <laughs> there's a way to fix things. <laughs> Okay, I can do it this way, but if I don't want to do it that way, I want it a longer way, I can turn it. But anytime we drape something, we cuff our hands, correct? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to cuff, I'm going to come in, I'm going to let it drop just like that. That's all I need to do. So I use one of yours. That's all I need. I'm just prepping from here to here. If I want to bring this back in a little bit, I can, because we have feet. Now, I know that they probably showed you pouring over the sponges mm -mm. No. they showed you over here yeah okay well, a lot of people will pour over the sponges but it splashes it out really bad so, now the same thing you go in circular motion we're getting some good sizzling this is dripping a lot because it's water and dish soap <laughs> Yeah, you have to cross over. Yeah. So what I'm doing, I'm making little circles, and I'm just going wider and wider and wider. And we got to be real careful that the back of your hand does not touch that. Mm -hmm. This is another trick of keeping, because you have to remember you're sterile, but only your, only to your wrist. Normally when you put on gloves up until thus far, you guys think, oh, I got my gloves on, that means I'm sterile and I can touch my gown and everything else. This is where you got to really use your noggin. This is smells good. <laughs> and remember, this is one of the biggest things that people do this. Mm -hmm. If you keep it on it'll be good. Unless you're leaning forward like that, then you gotta bring your arm out. If your hand does touch like the foot, you just can we ask you to like, use it anymore? Or another glove? If what? If, if, if that, that left foot? hand touched the touch so if I did this, just yeah. ask for a new glove. At this point, just, I would just put my hand out there, and I know it. that that hand's no okay. longer usable. Okay. okay. If I needed to, I could ask for a glove, or I could just open up another pair of gloves. Okay. Then start at the incision site, really scrub that incision site good. That's your biggest scrub. And do your little circles all the way around again. Miss Eason, are you having them do all six or just five? Five. five. Okay. Different manufacturers um, package sponges in different counts. The most common way in the old way is five. Some of them are doing six. Yeah, we've gone all the way around. Oh, yeah. I already have a drape here, so I don't need it. 
We use this one. Now what just happened? You touched it. You touched it. Oh, yeah. Right, the hand was contaminated. And people will pick it up like that and it'll hit their hands. Mm. Can't do that. That's no good. Well, it was contaminated. We just was asking your question. No, it hit her arm. Oh, yeah. 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 That's one of the biggest um, parts of contaminating is a drape or a towel, whichever one you want to call it. They both happen. Cont hitting an arm when you're either going to put it on, picking it up off there, putting it on, or taking it off. So I open it up. way what happens if you, let me make it stick real good there sorry <laughs> Go like that and it'll hit the table at this point it's okay so I'm gonna do paint and it's gonna drip off okay. you wouldn't normally get that many bubbles but it's mm -hmm. dish so We've got good bubbles. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you're doing the same thing as the abdominal prep. You're starting at the incision site, coming out and around. The only thing we're not doing is making the small little circles like we did when we were scrubbing. Can you come off the site like we couldn't? When we scrubbed our hands, can you? You're not supposed to come off the site. So what you would do is just throw it away and get another one. Mm -hmm. There's one. When you actually have the paint, you'll see it. You'll be able to see your lines a lot better. Mm-hmm. And will we ha be using the real paint? Mm -hmm. Okay. For all the practices, you'll use the right. water. What happens is it ruins the skin on the dummy's legs. Again. Another thing we don't want to do is follow your sponge to the <laughs> kick bucket. Correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. did come off the skin and like you were just now starting and you hadn't went all the way around yet and you had to throw it away you don't have I mean you just go to your other two that's left right and that yeah if way. you're almost done like right now if I came off the skin yeah okay. I would just go to the next ones what if it was your first one and you, what if you like, just went like once around and you like flipped it off that's what you're saying yeah like, mm -hmm. you just you didn't technically the prep three times it. what does Miss Eason want you to do with the I don't know. I'm just going to follow it I don't know we, we Miss Eason <laughs> Let's concur on something really quickly. Yeah. <laughs> if it's their first paint sponge mm -hmm. and they just went down and they came off the leg, would you want them to get a whole new set of paint sponges? Mm -hmm. Or just because use the remaining two? Use the remaining two. Okay. okay. So we stick with that. Okay. okay. I want to make sure everybody's on the same page. Okay. Now, if we did that with the with the sponges, we have that extra have one, extra right? One. Yeah. So then we would go on to the extra. Got it. Okay. You come up all of them. <laughs> <laughs> you You're in trouble. Just walk out. You're screwed. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you failed. <laughs> pretty. Okay. So, are we done yet? No. With the paint. We're done with the paint. But they can't start draping at that point, can they? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Take your. Clean up. So, if I pick it up like this, I could contaminate. It's hard. I tried to, but it didn't. It didn't work. But I tried to contaminate. <laughs> okay. So you can grab it here and just slide it off like that. Okay. Okay. 
throw it away. At this point, I'm done putting my hand over the surgical site, so I can drop it here. I can move where I want to move. You want to pick your stuff up. I'm not going to put it in there because it's full of soap. You would put your stuff in the trash, stuff in the trash, and you would take your gloves off how? Gloves to gloves. Gloves, gloves, skin, skin, skin. I think I'm done. Simple enough? Mm -hmm. I know you're not going to leave that there during surgery, right? This? Yeah. No. Okay, so what would you... How, yeah, how would you take how it? How would you do that? What would happen is you say, okay, I'm ready. The circulator, when the surgeon comes and he's got his drapes and everything, mm -hmm. she will either, from this point, still have her sterile gloves on, pick up the leg, move this out, and move this out, and she'll hold the leg for the surgeon. Stocking that, yeah. put it on, oh, yeah. and then he'll grab the leg. The scrub will come over and they'll drape. And we're okay. we back out. Okay. Yeah. It so much easier. I know. Yeah. Someone, I know. You get someone with a stocking net over yeah. their hand comes Sometimes in. Sometimes we just need help. That's all. <laughs> so when you guys are practicing stuff, things you're going to practice is how do you like to open your towel, I mean, which way it works best for you on a leg. If you want to go this way or that way, going this way lets you get all the way around. Mm -hmm. If you're doing a, a bunionectomy or let's say a hammer toe, mm -hmm. and you're doing your arounds, mm -hmm. um, are you going through each toe? Yeah. You're oh, on a person, you will, because their toes are flexible. Right. Yeah. On these dummies, they're not so flexible. Just listen up before you start whining about it. Listen up. Up like this. So you're gonna be going like this. I'm getting in between the toes because you can't. Yeah, we will tell you exactly where. We have to tell you exactly where the incision site is, or you won't know where to start your prep from. I did have a big old red gash here, but it keeps wearing off. So, because you can't, well, I can't, but because you guys can't really get in between the toes properly, what you're going to do is say, like, here's this hammer toe right here, this middle one. We're going to grab that one. We're going to go around. But you can't get in between the toes. They don't bend. They're not flexible. Yeah. Another question, what if for some reason that like slides up, that moves, that does something? As long as it doesn't move to this past joint, that. I'm okay. okay. As long as anywhere past that joint, it's fine. And you're going to work all the way down to the ankle? I'm going to go all the way to this joint. All the way around. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you're going to go all the way around. So if we draw a hand, then we'll want to go in between fingers, right? Because they're more flexible? Well, it's, you, you can try. It's, you can, but it's real hard to do. I mean, is we're hand gonna, an option? We're not going to set you up for failure. That much. Okay, just. But because these are dummies, we do understand that their toes are not flexible enough to spread apart as a real person would be. We, we understand that. Okay. Easy enough. Okay. Everybody on. Ace it. Piece of cake. Yeah. No problem. Got this. Piece of cake. Piece of cake. <laughs> Why is it a piece of cake? Because I'm going to be in here practicing all the yeah. time. <laughs> all right. Okay. Be